Greetings, everyone. I hope everyone is well and um, getting through these difficult times. I know that uh, in some places in this nation, especially I've seen out in like the Texas area, there's, I'm gonna say suffering with the elements and having some of the coldest records in history and uh, having snow and people are without heat. There's tornadoes and, and excessive rainfall, different places and excessive snow. Uh, I believe we really, you know, if you look at Matthew 24, we are living in those end times. And I always talk about that. I feel that we're at the end of the end of the age. And uh, it's when all of those things come together at once. And if you look around the world, there's many things happening, uh, earthquakes and uh, oh, places where the ground is caving in. I can't think what you call it, but you know, there's, there's just many things taking place throughout the world. And to me, they're indications of the end of the age. So, um, but I don't want to head off on a, a, a trail of gloom. It's just a place that where we are. So I really want to come to you with a, a message of hope and where we're at today. And I believe where the body of Christ is today. Uh, the other day I was visiting with some friends and it just came to me like all at once, you know, we've had to wear these masks and we have a variety of masks and I have a nice little uh, Christmas looking one. I'll probably have one for, I didn't have one for Valentine's Day, but I'll probably have one for uh, Easter and whatever. But uh, I've seen very clever mask and I thought I never lived to see the day I would tell people I'd be complimenting them on their mask, maybe hairdo or their clothing or their new car or whatever, but never a mask. But this is what came to me the other day, just out of the clear blue. So I felt it was like a revelation from the Lord. And that was, okay, we've had to wear the mask, which was covering up our mouth, covering up our real speaking ability. Have you noticed people read lips more than what you think? Like if you've gone to a restaurant and the person takes your order, they may bring you something totally different than what you ordered because they're used to reading your lips as you speak. But here's what I, what I heard, de-mask us. I feel the Lord is coming to remove our mask and de-mask us. So what is that? Damascus. I feel we're getting ready for a road to Damascus experience. Remember uh, Paul, before he was Paul, he was Saul and he was persecuting the saints. I mean, he was brutal in his persecution. And anyone who worshiped the Lord, he was going to either kill them or imprison them. Men and women, probably children also. And he was on his way to Damascus when he had this experience with the Lord. And, and I want to read that, that's in Acts um, 9. It says, then Saul, still breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and asked letters from him to the synagogue of Damascus so that he found any who were there who were followers of the way, whether men or women, that he may bring them bound to Jerusalem. And as he journeyed, he came near Damascus and suddenly a light shone around him from heaven. I think we're getting ready to have that light, the light of Jesus Christ, surround us in a way that we've never had before. Then he fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? See, I think we're getting ready individually and as a body to have an experience like this. And I believe that every one of us, you know, none of us are without a stain of some kind. You know, if, if we may not be out committing blatant sin, but there's still things, you know, if it's only in our thoughts that are impure. And I believe the Lord wants to remove all of that and what will do it, uh, an encounter and an impartation from the Lord. 
And he said, Who are you, Lord? Then the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. It is hard for you to kick against the goads. So he, Paul, trembling and astonished, said, Lord, what do you want me to do? Then the Lord said to him, Arise and go into the city, and you will be told what to do. Now, you know, remember he's there. The people who were with him did not see anything. They heard this noise, but they didn't know it was Jesus. But they took him into the city, and of course, three days he, he prayed and fasted, and he could not see. And then Ananias uh, had an encounter with the Lord and was told to go to the street called Straight, and there to the house of Judas. And there he would find Saul of Tarsus. Now, Ananias was a little bit shaken about that because he knew Saul's reputation. But he went, and you know, the Lord may call us to do something that we really don't want to do, but it's important that we are obedient because what if Ananias had not listened to the Lord? Okay? But he did. And he said, you know, that Paul had a vision, or excuse me, Saul had a vision, and that he would know that he was coming. And of course, when Ananias went into Saul and spoke with him, the scales came off of his eyes. And immediately, he went out and joined the disciples and began the work of a disciple and the work of the gospel. And that's what I believe is going to happen to many of us. I think some of us have just been timid and shy and it's like we're afraid to step out, but the Lord is going to remove our mask, not just from our mouth that we will speak, but those scales from our eyes are going to come off as well. And we are going to see supernatural. We are going to speak. Uh, the Lord said last year that this was the year of the mouth, the decade of the mouth. We're going to speak. And this year in the shepherd's rod, the Lord said, it's like fire in the bones of the believers. God is going to give us, each one of us, a message to speak. And it's going to be like fire in your bones until you bring that. And that mask, I don't care if we have to wear a mask, you can speak through it. The, the fire of God is going to come through that. So I think, get ready, body of Christ, get ready for a road to Damascus encounter where the fire of God, the light of God is going to touch you and burn out the impurities in each one of us and release us to do the work that we're called to do. It's not a time to be timid and shy. We need uh, to come forth in the power and authority that, that has been given to us. Um, I'm working on a book now called The Awakening, and it was a message that Bob brought back in 2010. And in that, he's talking about America and how she's been mesmerized. She followed delusions, not just one, but many delusions, and she was mesmerized, spellbound, and she was put to sleep. But now he has come, there's an awakening coming, and the church really determines the fate of America. Um, Bob went into great detail about the things that were going to take place. So that's been 10, close to 11 years that he brought this message. And I can see, you know, he talked about the rioting in the streets and um, how the enemy was coming to steal our constitution. And there's many other things that he talked about, but he said the fate really of the of America is in the hands of the church. And it's going to come through the, number one, repentance, and number two, the intercession. You know, we need to be constantly on our knees and interceding for the leaders of this nation. It's time that the redeemed of the Lord say so. God has given us the authority to speak. And I'm afraid we've been rather lax. It's just like, well, somebody else will do it. You know, but we need to, as Bob said, get off our seats and onto our knees and begin to pray. So 
there's a lot of things and I'll probably talk more about that later, but there's something else that the Lord gave me the other day. And he said, tell the people that I love them. Okay. God loves you. Okay. And he said, I've called them to be light in a dark place. Each one of us, we all, we may be a family, but we all go different ways. And there are multitudes of people that each one of us touch. So, we need to be that light in a dark place. Recently, I had a like a little blurp dream where there was a sound of an alarm. It was like a bank alarm that was going off, but no one seemed to pay any attention. And you know, when, remember like a, a school alarm or a, uh, when they ring a fire alarm in a building, it makes this blaring loud noise. Well, that's what was ringing. But people went about their work as if they never heard anything. And I'm afraid that's where many of us have been. The Lord is sounding his alarm for us to get out, of, come out of our complacency and begin to do what he's called us to do. It's the sound of heaven being relate, released in the earth. Okay, the second thing the Lord said the other day was that the new wine is about to be poured out. And we must not only be partakers of this new wine, but we must be distributors as well. When we receive from Christ, then we need to be able to give it back and unto others. Uh, freely we receive, freely we should give. And... A lot of times, I think when somebody is healed of, especially something major, uh, you know, say perhaps cancer, maybe they had liver cancer, lung cancer, colon cancer, whatever, um, and they're healed. God radically heals them. And a lot depends on their attitude. What do they do with that? You know, they can be joyful and go out and lay hands on other people, begin praying for other people. Who can they help? And, you know, a powerful testimony can bring a healing. So we need to be partakers of this new wine. He is that new wine that's being poured out. It's the power and the glory in that new wine. And we need to partake of it and give it out. Don't just hold on to it for yourself. And he said, I'm lifting my hands this day and pouring forth that new wine. Now drink and partake from the master's table. And I believe he's really talking about the resurrection power and kingdom authority. You know, I like to take communion every day. I mean, there are some days that I miss, but there's so much um, intimacy in that time of uh, communion with the Lord. I just really feel like I'm sitting at the master's table and partaking of that uh, of his body and of his blood, of that power, of that glory, of that authority. So and there's many, uh, many things that that new wine will bring to the body of Christ. You know, it's a time for miracles. Uh, it's a time for intimacy with the Lord. You know, you can hide yourself away for a little while and just hang out with Jesus. Just find some quiet time. If it's if you have to go sit in your car, if you've got little kids, the only place to go is in your garage and sit in the car. Do that, you know, or take a walk. Just put the cell phones away and all that other stuff and just have some time with Jesus. Uh, it's time for harvest. That new wine, that oil, that anointing oil is going to flow freely in this time of harvest. And I believe we're in that time right now. Uh, it seems... Were they, what were they saying months ago? It's the new normal. Well, I don't know that I like all of it, but we have to go with the flow and you can look for ways to be creative and reach people. It isn't that you don't have to be in a big group like maybe we were before. You can reach people. And you know, the most important thing is through prayer. A lot of times you may not. I like to seek the Lord every day, first thing in the morning and ask him who or what or where what's on your heart lord who or what or where would you have me pray about today you know and then just seek him it's funny it kind of comes like a little news flash to me as to those topics of what he wants me to pray for that day 
the new wine needs new wine skin. It can't, things can't be done the old way. That wine is never going to fit. God is doing a new thing. Okay. And we need to be open to receive it. It's that new wine. It's time for the open door. And Revelation 4, 1, you know, first we had to go through repentance in Revelation 3. And then that door, you know, the Lord is standing there waiting for us to open that door. But the door has been open. And he's waiting for us to come and sup with him. So I believe, like I said to begin with, it's the road to Damascus experience that we are going to uh I, I believe many of us are going to have an encounter like Saul did. Don't be surprised if the Lord gives you a new name. I know years ago, he gave me the name of Sarah. And I thought, oh my goodness, am I going to be having a child when I'm 90 years old? I hope not. But uh, Sarah was a mighty woman. And if you look at, you know, she was married to Abraham and of course, really was if he was the father of many nations she was the mother of many nations so get ready for a new name get ready for that road to damascus as we are demasked uh, the mask removed here that we will speak clearly what the lord gives us and the mask removed from our eyes you know a couple weeks ago i saw bob and I had this dream where Bob had on the little mask that fit across his eyes. It was like the Zorro type mask. And it's actually called a domino mask. And I never knew that. But domino comes from um, dominus, which means dunamis. And that means power. And I believe that as I first saw him with that mask on, and then it was taken off. And I feel it's just like the scales come, coming off of uh, Saul's eyes and him becoming a new person, a new person in Christ. So let me just leave you with that. I pray that many of you have a, a great encounter, a road to Damascus encounter, and that your vision is a hundred times greater than it ever was before and that new wine as it's poured out that you will receive it with joy and speak what God gives you fear not what the enemy does for Jesus is our rear guard right and no weapon formed against us is going to prosper it may look like the enemy has us defeated but he doesn't he is the loser so be blessed in Jesus' name, and uh, we'll see you next time. Okay, bye-bye.